Welcome to all who are in worship this morning, both here in the church and both attending virtually through Facebook Live and YouTube. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lawrence Bradley. I'm your lay leader, and I'm honored to have been asked to share a moment with you on stewardship. One of my favorite scripture verses is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, beginning in verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14a. Seek me with all of your heart is a strong statement, but it's a statement filled with a promise. When we join the church, we agree to faithfully participate in his ministries by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Our prayers, our communication with God, a time of praise and thanksgiving, a time of asking and yes, a time of listening. Prayers fuel our church. Our presence, weekly worship, Bible studies, Sunday school, youth groups. It's drawing closer to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit through fellowship and ministry. Our faith grows when we're in fellowship with God and with one another. Our gifts, our gifts fund the church. Not only the building, but its programs, its ministries, such as curriculum provided for Sunday school, Bible studies, etc., musical instruments, soloists, musicians, sheet music, computers, sound equipment, video equipment, lighting, funding this amazing staff. Maintenance for our beautiful facilities. You know, I'm told that 90 95% of our pledges goes to fund the ministries of this congregation. Our service, you know, giving back, being involved in the church. And I choose to serve in several areas of the church. The music of the church is how, I, is how God drew me into a relationship with him, and I do love music, so it's through serving in the praise band, chancel choir, and handbell choir that I honor this relationship with God to the point that these choir members, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional, <laughs> Really like family to me. As a lay leader and serving on various committees of the church, I'm learning and growing in the knowledge of how the church and its ministries really work, one body working together. It is in serving, giving up my personal time, that I choose to honor the relationship that God so desires with me. I've shared this before, and I think it's worth saying again. Many years ago, while camping at Myrtle Beach, the campground pastor asked me where I attended church. My response was, first and foremost, I'm a Christian, and God has me serving at First Church Wilson. There are many areas where we can serve, so I encourage you to pick one as that of your interest, invest your time in it, and I promise you'll be blessed. We're almost finished with the nominations for 2023, so if you receive a call to serve now or later, please consider this as an opportunity not only to grow in the knowledge of the operation of our church, but also to grow and deepen your relationships with members of this congregation. Thinking about it now, I cannot imagine how anyone can go through a tragic loss, news of a life, any illness, without the love and care of a local church family. Our witness is supported by all of the above and does not end there. Our witness should be beyond, it should extend beyond the church, you know, in homes and our workplaces. As Christians, we are set apart for God's glory. Strangers should immediately know that we're different. We should be Christ-like not only in our words, but in our actions. 
Trust me in saying that if you profess you're a Christian, people are watching. Remember the promise we made when we joined the church <clears throat> to faithfully participate in its ministries by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So I challenge you, please remember all that has been shared by the stewardship committee these last few weeks. As you decide your pledge for the church, remember that a majority of your pledge goes to support the ministries of this congregation. Our church runs on a budget, and that is fueled totally by what is pledged. Every year in finance meetings, we hear about the number of pledge cards that have not been turned in, and this really makes me sad. As a member of the finance committee, we try really hard to fund all the programs. However, it cannot be funded or build a budget around the unknown. The finance committee needs our insight. They need our written pledge. They need our commitment. The church is not perfect, just like you and I are not perfect. However, the church is made up of God's people, each of whom have a responsibility to use their resources for the fulfillment of making disciples and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Therefore, please commit your prayers to pledge. Your pledge to prayers. Can't see. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come to him and he will sup with him and he with me. That's Revelation 3.20. Many years ago, the music of the church drew me into a life-changing relationship with Jesus which led me into this long-time commitment to this church on the corner of Tarver and Green Streets. For me, it was life-altering. Church can do the same for you, your children and grandchildren. Be intentional in making your pledge commitment. Complete in turning your pledge card. Be generous as God has been both generous and gracious to you. The church is counting on you and me, for we are a family repeat that. The church is counting on you and me, for we are family. In 1 John chapter 4, 16, we read, Therefore we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. To him be the glory. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs>